Today, we're going to be talking about something I'm really passionate about, and you've known this for a long time. I'm a big Apple fan. Some people call me an Apple fanboy. And today, I'm making a bold prediction. But before we do that, let's do a quick introduction. I'm Johnny Rodriguez, Strategic Innovation Director here at Fresh Consulting. And we have... And I'm Elijah Elisha. Parada, Technical Innovation Director at Fresh Consulting. Awesome. So here is my bold prediction, Elisha. My bold prediction is that when Apple releases their upcoming mixed reality headset, I believe that it will trigger mass adoption for VR for the first time. And uh, mass adoption is a big question. Uh, you know, there's a question of what 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 makes something uh, mass adopted. The trigger that I've seen typically has been the 50 million uh, mark of adoption essentially we actually have seen that throughout the life cycle of meta's um you know i guess they were the oculus devices their their quest devices um uh i think we've seen before christmas i think they were at about 38 million units sold total um and that's since the time that they before their acquisition and after 38 million units sold but in a single year the number's been quite low i think that when we finally get the numbers for 2021, we'll be pretty surprised. They're pretty high, but I don't think that we're at that mass adoption stage yet. And mm -hmm. I think that Apple will be the one to bring that mass adoption. And I want to talk a little bit about why they're prepared for that and maybe some examples of what, what we might be seeing. And we're talking about the MR headset, the photos that we've been seeing in the news article yes. recently, right? Not the, exactly. not the glasses. The four to AR. Yeah, that, there's a difference. So yeah, let's talk about it. that. So there is rumor of two different devices. And by rumor, I mean, uh, you know, verified rumors where there's been leaks or there's been patents that have been tied to it. There's a lot of data around what might be coming. There's also um, leakers, right? Like Apple's really known for having um, really, uh, really good leakers that have 90, 95% mm -hmm. accuracy to their leaks over year over year. And some of these people have been claiming what's coming. And so we have some data around what will be coming. Um, but there is a difference. There is a, a, um, a mixed reality headset is what it's been referred to as. We could call it a VR headset. But the idea, the reason it's mixed reality is that, that it will have a cover that will optionally be able to be removed or it will have pass through in the way that the mm. Quest has where you can actually see the room even though you have a headset that's covering. And then the Got AR it. glasses is a whole nother concept. The rumor on that is that that's coming in 2024. So there's still a little bit out there. Um, and I have some thoughts around that too, but I'm, I'm focused more today on the VR or the MR, the mixed reality headset that might be coming. Got it. Yeah. So people have been calling it the Apple Vision headset. Um, uh, and it's said to run uh, an operating system called ROS, Reality OS. Hmm. Um, the rumor is that it's going to be announced in the second half of this year. Recent articles are saying that that's coming later. Um, I think we'll still see the announcement before Christmas. We'll see. Um, and that will be announced along with their new iOS version, uh, which I think will be iOS 16. So we'll get iOS 16 and probably the announcement of a, of a VR headset. But I think part of this prediction comes from the fact that if you follow, if you've been an Apple, if you've been in the Apple ecosystem for a while, and Elisha, I think you know that I'm in the Apple ecosystem. I have the Apple... You know, I have the Macs, I have iPads, I have the, you know, the watch. You have HomeKit. HomeKit, completely home. on mode with uh, 200 yeah. devices in my HomeKit. Um, you know, uh, so lots of the Apple products are, are in my home. Apple TVs on all of our TVs for our kids and things like that, right? But the main reason that I'm in the ecosystem of Apple is because of the ecosystem. The fact that there are benefits to leveraging, like when I have my Apple Watch, I can go to my Apple TV and play a Fitness Plus exercise and it'll prompt it on my watch and all of the data that's coming from my watch will be projected on the screen and I can see my heart rate and I can see how well I'm doing and that data will then transfer and I can see that in a widget on my MacBook or on my iPhone or on my iPad. And so the ecosystem really, really works well together. Elisha, would you say that you're pretty well adopted in an Apple ecosystem or are you in a different ecosystem? I think I'm maybe majority Apple, but open to other ecosystem. For example, yeah. for the TV, we use Google TV Stick because we like how it aggregates uh, programs across different 
um, like accounts that I own, like Netflix, YouTube, Crunchyroll. It brings all in as a recommendation. That's a strength that a Google platform brings, as、mm. opposed. And you can add Apple TV there too, as opposed to just Apple TV. And also from the price point of view, I don't always want to opt into the, <laughs> the Apple price, so、mm. I'm okay with the having mixed. But yeah, for work for personal. I use Mac. I use iPhone. I use、Got、iPad、it. Pro, and you、yep. know, creating like this、uh, system of sharing files is probably the biggest thing I use. Like AirDrop, so much easier to do that instead of copying to the USB or having to upload to the drive. All、yeah. that it's a lot of work, right? So I use mostly for AirDrops and iCloud to share contacts, my notes, all these things across. That's a good point, and that's where I was going to go. Is what elements of the of the ecosystem are you leveraging most?、So、you mentioned AirDrop and the iCloud and things like that. Yeah, those are those are really powerful ones. Yeah, I forget those are some that you you tend to forget about or little details that Apple will have where you're like, wow, that's actually really convenient that that can can speak to other things, right? One of my favorites is when、uh, I have a new user come to my home or new、uh, user, <laughs> a new、uh, guest that comes into <laughs> <User> . my home, <laughs> a new guest that comes into my home. And they say, "Hey, what's the Wi-Fi password?" And they go to type in the password, and then everyone that has an iPhone that's already in the Wi-Fi password, you know, that already、yes. has Wi-Fi password, gets prompted, "Hey, do you want to share this with Elisha?" And you、yeah. share it, and it's a one-click, one coolest thing, invisible、yeah. UI, right?、Um, and there's elements of that. So where I'm going with this, Elisha, is the Apple ecosystem. If you look at iOS 15, even going back to iOS 14 and 13, there have been some intentional shifts in the UI, in the experience, and in the feature set、hmm. that have, in my opinion, Been leading towards the eventual mixed reality headset, and I want to talk about that because if you start to connect the dots of like, oh, I really think this is convenient in my Apple TV or my Apple Watch, and then you think about the implications of that for a virtual reality headset, you start to connect the dots to say like, oh wow, when they finally drop their headsets, it's going to be a huge, huge part of the ecosystem, and it will connect it all really, really well together. So, what I mean by that is, and I have a, a list of things. So.、Uh, Let's let's not talk about where I, where I think the device will be focused. I mean, there's a lot of cool things that we'll be able to do, but I think let's start with the Memoji. Memoji was something that was announced a few years ago. There's a lot of confusion around it. Like, okay, cool, I can see an avatar version of myself, and I can control it with my mouth, and I can use that for stickers when I'm talking to somebody in, a, in chat. I could use it as a as a augmented reality like virtual head as I'm I'm in FaceTime with somebody,、um, and then outside of that, you don't really see it. It might be used as your avatar. So there was some confusion around it. My my、uh, analysis of it is that the Memoji was made for the mixed reality headset. Eventually, you're going to need a virtual version of yourself. That's your identity, and the Memoji has existed for a few years, and that that will be essentially how we interact. So if we go to the Quest today and I, I consume their their Horizon Worlds or Horizon Venues, and I interact with you, Elisha, in virtual reality. Meta has their version of avatars, right? If I go to a metaverse environment like Somnium Space or Decentraland, I might use Ready Player Me. That's a competitor as an avatar, and so a lot of people are trying to play in this avatar interoperability space. And Apple's been in it for a while. They've already have it across all of their ecosystem. So I think we'll see elements of that. So why don't we go? Can you go full screen on that if you don't mind? And then I'll have you hit right arrows for me. I appreciate you doing that. So if you go full screen on your Figma, it's on the far right by the word options. You can go full screen on this prototype for answering a call.、Uh, let's see if this will work.、Uh, I think it's not zoomed. I think it's like zoomed in for some reason. But if you hit the right arrow key, you might be in a virtual environment, and you'll say, "Hey, answer the call." Oh, here we go. There it is. You might say, "Hey, answer the call," and then if、wow. you hit next. Then it analyzes that the call gets started, and then you hit arrow again, and then you might see the Memoji version.、You're、like, hey, how's it going, Elisha? We might actually be interacting. Somebody、Aww. might be on their face on their FaceTime. I I answer FaceTime all the time as my avatar for my kids. They enjoy that, and so in this case, I might be on my phone, and you might be in your headset. And so this is like a concept of that, right? Um, so I'll come back to the other prototype here. So that that's an emoji, right? There's this concept of AirPlay and SharePlay that I think are going to be really powerful. So today, I really enjoy using AirPlay to to show something from my phone and to put that onto the screen. If you're on a Google,、mm-hmm. if you're from the Google ecosystem, you're probably more familiar with Chromecast、um, and things like that.、Um, so Apple has AirPlay as a way to put something from one screen to the other. 
And that is actually, I would say, one of the largest, one of the biggest disadvantages today with the like Meta's um, Quest systems is although there is a way to use Chromecast and to put something onto the screen or put something onto your phone, the reliability and the latency and the quality is quite low. And it's not very, um, yeah, it's not very high resolution. It's not very dependable. When I have guests over and I put on a VR headset and I want to show them the experience that I'm consuming, maybe it's Beat Saber or like something fun or something creative a lot of times they can't actually see it. And so AirPlay as part of this ecosystem is going to be really, really powerful in that ecosystem. Or their newer their newer announcement of SharePlay, which came in iOS 15. SharePlay is, quite, is a slightly different. So with SharePlay, I could start a Netflix show and I could call you, Elisha, and I'd say, hey, let's do SharePlay. And what that does is now you get native Netflix on your device and we're watching Netflix at the exact same mm. time. And so SharePlay becomes another way to consume. Maybe you can watch what I'm doing from a virtual reality perspective on your phone or your device or your Apple TV from your home. So it starts to take it outside of my own environment to everyone else. And that's built to do Got something. Got it. Like that. So I could be wearing headset watching in the big theater while yep. you might be watching on your phone exactly and so kind of having that that the differences of devices and the ability to share across everything so they're they're set up to do that i'm just going to run past a few other things like spatial audio the idea of having 360 degree audio on your headphones or when i put on my airpod my airpods and i have my apple tv on even though i'm connected to my phone it'll prompt me press the home button to connect your hair, your airpods right now and i push one button and my head my headphones go from my phone to my apple tv so same thing i put on my virtual reality headset hey do you want to connect your airpods one button clicks yes right the convenience of the ecosystem um so that's the Air, airpods nearby feature so if you look at um um there, there's elements of that that we might look at that um there are other things like the the concept of um you know apple tv plus is a is a one of the competitors to Netflix and Prime and things like that, and so we'll see elements of that in here. So if you go back to this prototype really quick, Elisha, and I think we'll just show a few yeah. of these last little details. I'd love to chat more about this in the future and go through some other parts, but there are other concepts and flows in this prototype that I just sent over to you. So if you go over to the one that says swipe up for apps, which is the first one on the left hand side there, yeah, it says answering call. Yep, and if you hit right. So this might be, for example, leveraging some of the, and I think it's zoomed in again, leveraging some of the uh, concept of the Apple TV, where I might be in a virtual environment and I'm like, hey, let me consume my apps or my games. And then I'd swipe up and you'd see something. So click right. You can see me kind of going from one app to the other. Maybe I launch Apple TV and that, that might then show up. You can see the share play icon on the top left, or I might do picture in picture mode where I can keep watching my show while I'm playing a game or talking to other people. If you go over to the control center via the watch concept, um, you'll see that there are concepts here around the control center. So imagine if you could control your control center. I think you have to zoom out here again. Um, the control center being controlled through your Apple watch. Um, they have cameras that can mm, actually recognize cool. the watch. So being able to actually control with an interface using your actual watch might be interesting. That's Obviously, you'll cool. probably have voice and gestures and things, but this is just the concept of um, something familiar to other Apple TV users, that little sidebar. And then the last one here is the Apple Watch one. So we're used to kind of how the layout is on apps. Oh, so you might actually go and say, cool. oh, let me see which app I want to launch on my Apple TV. So whether or not I have a watch on my wrist, maybe in virtual reality, it shows my hands and it gives me a virtual watch that lets it be like the menu system for how I consume things. So I might go and launch my calendar and launch different things. Anyway, the point is, Elisha, it's an exciting time. I'm really excited about what Apple's predicts, what, you know, Apple's mixed reality headset. If you want to know more about uh, some of these predictions and maybe some more designs and prototypes that are coming, we'll probably do a part two. But feel free to follow us on our Twitter at TryJohnny and at Elisha Tarada. 